All right, in this video, we are looking at a difficult network diagram with lag. Completely unrealistic problem, but who knows if you're uh, if you're taking this in school, your teacher might just be mean enough to give you something like this. So let's go and do the the Gantt chart, and then after we'll make our PDM network diagram. So first up, let's set up our Gantt chart. So now our first activity in the project will be activity A because it has no predecessor. It has a duration of three, so it will go from zero to one, two, three. There it goes from that, till the end of day three. Activity B depends on A. It's a finish to start relationship with a lag of two. So that means we have to find the end of A, count two days for our lag, uh, and then because it's a regular finish to start relationship, that means we can start at that point that's two days after, and then we'll go for two days because that's what its duration is. All right, so activity C depends on A, and it's a start-start relationship, so that means activity C can start when A starts. There's no lag, so we will start right at this zero again. And this one's also two days, so we will just go to that two there. Activity D. This guy depends on activity B. It's a start-start relationship with a lag of one. So we find where B starts, come down to D, because we're looking at activity D now, and it's a lag of one, so we'll go out one. And this is four days long, so we'll go from six out to ten, right? One, two, three, four. All right, activity E. This guy depends on activity C, and it's a start to finish relationship of three. All right, so the start to finish relationship is the weirdest one. Uh, first of all, let's figure out what the lag is. So it's a lag of three. So we come up from the start of C, we go one, two, three. And because it's a start to finish relationship, that means that E can finish three days after C starts. And it's a duration of one, so we'll just count back one from there, and that's where we'll get activity E happening. Uh, it'll go for just this one day here. All right, activity F. Uh, this is uh, depends on C, and it's finish-finish relationship with a lag of three. So let's find out where C finishes. Okay, it finishes on the two here. Uh, finish finish relationship with a lag of three. So that means that F can finish three days after C can finish. Okay, so we'll count three days out. One, two, three. So that will be the finish point of F, but it has a duration of two. So that means it would have to start on the three if it's going to finish here on the five. Activity G. This depends on two things. It depends on D and E. And specifically for D, it's a start-start relationship of one, or with a lag of one. So first, let's see where that would be. So activity G, D starts up here on the six. So if we were going to go by that, uh, we would have a start start with a lag of one. So this would be its potential starting point. Uh, but we also have to consider that it can't start before E is over. Like E has to be done before G can start. So let's go find where E is. Okay, well E is finishing here on three and it's, it's just a regular finish to start relationship. So that would be the other potential starting place. Uh, but we can't start here because it would violate the start start with a lag of one coming off of D. So we have to we have to satisfy both. So that will be this guy here. So we'll go out four days for duration. One, two, three, four, just like that. Okay. So now activity H, it also has to satisfy two things. <clears throat> uh, it depends on F with a start to finish relationship of two. So let's look at this guy. So where's F? F is here start to finish relationship of two. So we find the start of F, that would be here, and then th that means the finish of G could be two days after that. So that's where the finish would be. And it's three days long, so one, two, three. Okay, so that right here is the potential, one of the potential start dates. Uh, and also we have, it has to depend on G. So it just it's a regular uh, finish to start relationship off of G, so the other potential start date is right there. Well, right away, if we started here, we would be violating the fact that uh, activity H can't start until G is done, so this has to be the start date. Uh, so we'll start it here, and it's three days long, so go one, two, three. Okay, so now let's draw the PDM network diagram. I fast forwarded it because it's a, it's a long, boring process that I don't want you to have to just sit through and watch me draw, but I encourage you to check for yourself to make sure this is all correct. Uh, now, so we'll do our forward pass and then our backward pass, and then that should be enough to wrap up this video. So let's go ahead and we'll also compare it to our Gantt chart and make sure that everything matches up. 
Okay, so for activity A, it starts at the beginning. So we have 0 plus 3, early finish is 3, and let's just fill out B. So we have a finish to start relationship with B with a lag of 2. So that means that activity B's earliest start is just 2 days after A's early finish. So 3 plus 2, we're going to get a 5 in there. 5 plus 2 is 7 for the early finish. For D, the start start with a lag of 1 coming off of B. That means activity D can start 1 day after activity B. So it will start on 6, we'll have 6 plus 4, and it will end. Its earliest finish will be on 10. We can't fill this out yet because it has two competing values. So we'll come back down here. C is a start-start relationship coming off of A. So it can start when A starts. So we have this 0, then 0 plus 2. We get its earliest finish is 2. Uh, start to finish relationship with a lag of 3. So E's finish will be 3 days after C's start. So we're going to bring have 0 plus 3, we'll add the lag, so we'll get the 3 in the early finish, and then to find the early start, we'll have to subtract the duration, so this guy would start on 2. Now for activity F, finish to finish relationship with a lag of 3, so that means F can finish 3 days after C finishes, so 2 plus 3 is 5 for the early finish, and then again we'll have to subtract the duration to find out, figure out when that guy has to start, so it'll be 5 minus 2 will give us 3. So coming into the earliest start for G. We can either have a start start plus 1. So coming off of D, the start start plus 1, that would be 6 plus 1 is 7. So we can either have 7 uh, to go in the early start, or we can have 3, right? Just a regular finish to start relationship. And we're going to have to pick the largest value, so we will take the 7. So we'll erase those guys, and we'll add in the 7. That way it satisfies both requirements that D and E, uh, the logic is satisfied. Um, so 7 plus 4, that would give us the earliest finish of 11. And then looking here at activity H, its earliest start, according to F, will that be start, finish, 2. So that means it could finish two days after F starts. So that would be 3. So its finish could be 5. And then subtracting the 3 here, its potential start based on uh, the requirement of for F uh, would be the second day. Uh, according to G, it's a regular finish to start relationship, so we would just have to bring the 11 in. So we could also have 11. Well, 11 is the greater than 2, so 11 wins. We have to take the larger value in order to satisfy both of these predecessor relationships. Uh, so we will be putting in 11 as the early start of H, and then to add 3, we get 14 for uh, project duration. Now, let's, at this point, we can compare and see if we got the same values uh, with our Gantt chart and then the early start, early finish of our PDM network diagram. So A goes from 0 to 3. A goes from 0 to 3. B goes from 5 to 7. Uh, on the Gantt chart, it also goes from 5 to 7. Activity D goes from 6 till 10. So on the Gantt chart, it also goes from 6 till 10. Uh, activity C goes from 0 to 2. 0 to 2, that looks okay. Activity E goes from 2 to 3. That checks out. Activity F goes from 3 to 5. Where's activity F? 3 to 5. Same thing. Uh, did we already do G? No, not yet. So G goes from 7 to 11. Same on the PDM network diagram. And H goes from 11 to 14. It looks good. So that's just highlighting the fact that you can do this visually using a Gantt chart, or you can get the same results by doing your forward pass in your PDM network diagram. Uh, and it's a good way to cross check between the two and make sure that you've done it correctly. Okay, so now let's do the backwards pass, and this will get a little crazy, but we'll work our way through it. So we'll bring down this 14 and subtract 3 to get 11. Now this is a regular finish to start relationship, so we can just bring that 11 right in just like that, and subtract 4 and get 7. You know what, let's do it as many as we can that are, seem easy. Uh, this is also a regular finish to start relationship, so we can bring the 7 right in here. 7 minus 1, we'll get a 6. Uh, now, looking up here at activity D, this is a start-start relationship with a lag of 1. So that means that G can start one day after D starts. Uh, that's regardless, uh, that is for the early, path, early start or the late start. So in this case, it's 7. This guy uh, starts at 7 and it starts one day after D, so we'll just have to subtract 1 and put that 6 right in there. And then we'll be able to find the late finish by adding the duration, so we'll get 10. Okay, we can do the same thing here for activity B. It's, an, it's another start-start relationship with a lag of 1. So again, take this start, subtract 1 from it, and put that number here. We get 5, 5 plus 2 is 7. 
Okay, we can't fill this out because it's competing values. Can't fill this out because they're competing, competing values. So we got to figure out this guy. This is a start to finish relationship with a lag of two. So that means activities H can finish two days after activity F starts. So what we do is we identify the finish of this, it's 14. And this guy can start two days before, so we would bring a 12 in here, right? 14 minus 2 for that lag, and then we just add this, and we're going to find out that this is our late finish of 14, because that's 12 plus 2. All right, now looking at competing values, going on the backward pass, we need to take the smallest value. So here it gets a little tricky. This is a start to finish relationship with a lag of 3 coming off of E. So E's late finish is 7, so we have to subtract three from that, that would give us four. And so that would potentially give us a start date of four down here, um, which then we would have uh, four plus two, that would give us a potential late finish of six. Then according to this finish finish relationship with a lag of three, we would have 14. So this guy could finish three days before that. So we would have 14 minus three. So that could also be 11. And that would give us a minus two uh, potential late start of nine. But on the backward pass, we have to pick the smallest value here. So it will in fact be the six for the late finish and not the 11. So we can go and erase those guys. Uh, and we'll get a six here, subtract the two, and we will get a four for our early or late start, sorry. Now looking at this one, we have two options again. We can bring in start start relationship. So according to this guy, uh, we could potentially start on a four here, or also we have finish to start minus two. So what we're saying here is that this guy can start two days after this one finishes. So we would take this five and we would subtract two from it. Uh, we would be able to bring in that three. And if we had this four here, uh, this would actually, if you add the three, we would get a seven, two competing values for the late finish. Uh, but we have to take the smaller one on the backward pass, so the three will win here. Uh, so we'll get that three in there, three minus three is zero. And ending on zero, you know you've done it correctly. And again, just a reminder that this is an entirely unrealistic problem. I just put in basically the hardest problem I could think of right now uh, just, to, just to work through the forward and backward pass, but totally unrealistic in real life or anything like that. But who knows, you might have a really mean teacher that's going to throw something like this at you at a test.